Hey guys and welcome back to the Rider Eye Waxing and UK One Wheel channel. So we're on a late one tonight, it's just gone half past uh, 10, wow. And uh, I'm working on skis because I've been working all day and I just want to make sure we can get these skis back to the client as fast as possible because they are off skiing hopefully at the end of this week, subject to Covid conditions obviously. And uh, yeah, we just want to make sure these skis are tip top. So very much like the other set that I've just done, this is a husband and wife set. This is obviously the husband set. We've got the boot, which they've kindly given me. I've checked over the boot. And remember guys, like I said in my previous video, get those boots on your feet. Check the insoles, check the ratchets. Make sure that you know how many turns it is for your comfiness. Make sure you've got no hot spots, but make sure you keep those boots on for a good 45 minutes to an hour so your feet can really warm up. And then basically it just reminds you of how uncomfortable they are. <laughs> That's why I snowboard, but anyway. Um, what I've also done by giving us the boot is I've been able to set the bindings up. So we make sure that the boot is perfectly central from the marking on the underside of the boot to the marking that's on the actual binding uh, on the ski um, and they line up perfectly. We've got the torsion absolutely set right, the din setting that is for the front and the back. The customer has given me his credentials and I'll put a great website link and I'll put the video of the credentials that I looked up on the website now on the screen. And you can actually see through the intermediate riding ability, the weight and the height, um, and also the age of the customer, as well as the length of the boot. Now this boot is a 338 in length. So to make sure that you get that binding set and you get the torsion on the back of the binding absolutely perfect, you put all that in and you can set the binding up nicely. Now these din settings, both front and back on both skis, were set around about four, and actually the gentleman's riding style, if he's an intermediate rider, should be around six and a half. So we've cranked those up on the nose and we've cranked them up on the tail of the binding and they are now ready to go. It's a lovely, as you can tell, nice tight fit. And there's an always good top tip, is just make sure there is that center mark just, just there, is to take a photo of your bindings. Um, when I say a photo of your bindings, of the markings of your bindings. Just so you know, if jumping, somebody were to jump into your skis after a bit of apre, or you've gone in and had something to eat, and you come out and the skis have been moved or knocked over and something's hit it, because they've all got adjustable catches on, for argument's sake, if I slot that just in there, we have the adjustable catch, which is just here. You lift this up, and then you can slide this binding backwards and forwards. Now that can cause you an issue if you're not quite sure where they've got to be, and all of a sudden your boot is offset on one ski, but the other ski is fine, and obviously it does disrupt, obviously you're riding somewhat. So if you have a photo and you know exactly where they should be, if there's ever an instance where this actually did come and uh, detach, you can simply click it straight back in and you're up and riding again. Now, for this gentleman, we've got it set on the blue. So the STUV on the front binding, and then we've got it set up on the S, which is just there, on the back binding. And that gives us perfect, perfect torsion on the actual rear of the ski, know that we've got the ski boot centralised into the ski and everything is ready to rock and roll. So easiest way there to put the ski in if you wanted to double check the boot in is just to lift up the handles, which helps lift the boot or push the boot, should we say, down in. Now these are a nice tight fit and bang, that boot is in and isn't going anywhere. But like I say with your boots, guys, another good top tip would be, if I crack that out, Make sure you get your boots on your feet. Good 45 minutes to an hour. Heat your feet up. Make sure the insoles are still comfortable. And again, if you need to replace them, replace them. You spend a lot of time in your boots. So the skis can be as perfect as possible. Carvable, sharp, polished. But if your boots are uncomfortable, it does affect your riding, both mentally and physically. So make sure you've got them on your feet. Make sure you know how many turns your buckles are per, obviously, buckle so you know exactly how you tight or untight you can do them again just in case you take them off and they get knocked and you get a hot spot on say a big toe or a little toe so yeah get them on get them walking make sure everything's okay i've gone over this boot and just made sure everything's done up tight which it is um, for the customer but again do make sure you check your boots over it's just as important as checking your skis but we're going to get into these skis these atomic uh, beta skis these are a lovely ski I uh, really are a nice ski. Um, they need a little bit of work. This ski here is the best out of the two. This one here, however, has somewhat got some gouging marks. Now, just on here, I can really pick the back side of that ed, um, rail up, as you can tell, just there. It is quite a deep gouge in there. So we're gonna get the P-Tex into that bit 
obviously once sharpening up the base and the rails because they are a little bit rusty but nothing that we can't sort out we have a little bit of a hole just here we're going to uh, base scrape this one it does look like we've had a little bit of heat there from an iron possibly a bit of burning to the base of the ski just here and just here so we'll do our best to try and tidy that up um as well as um yeah other than that really and we've got a bit of a hole here so um i try and get away with as least amount of p-tex as possible because it's not porous but we'll get these bits done but this is normally comes last we get the edges done first um we get the bases done these are like i say not that sharp to be honest they actually do look okay in the sense in some areas but we're going to get these super sharp super nice and then we'll get some p-tex laid down on this ski and on this one and uh, then we'll lay some wax, get it stripped off, and hopefully look 100% better, and they get ready for the sleep. So, that's it. Let's crack on with these, back to time lapse. But like I said in my previous video, if there's anything you want to see a bit more slow motion wise, so I can talk you through it, that's great. I do these videos so, so the customers can see, obviously the before and the after, and also so I can explain things like the settings or the bindings, they can always refer back to it whenever they like in years to come if they've still got the skis but i'm going on guys please keep watching and thank you very much indeed so far and uh, yeah it's late let's get into these skis Okay, so we're going to get rid of all the chatter marks, both front and rear. But you can see this line just here. Now, this is where belt sand has been pushed onto the ski as an indentation. You can see that there's like a reverse speed bump. And that's where belt sander, obviously, when somebody's done a base or the edges or whatever they've used. But that's a, quite a nasty little divot there. I'll try and flatten that out as much as possible. Um, you can just see it there. So that's unfortunately where belt sand has gone on. They've pushed it a little bit too hard. Posts are scumming in from shoo, straight into it like this. And then applying the pressure gently, they've gone straight in or they've just caught it by accident maybe. I don't know, but we'll try and get that as flat as possible. I think I'm gonna save putting P-Tex. We've got a bit of a mark here, but it's not too bad. I don't really want to put P-Tex in that unless I've got a big deep hole. I'll just flatten the uh, base scrape this one a bit more um, and try and get that. It's flat. It's nice and smooth, but there's a slight indentation there. Um, but we'll see how that goes. Um, base is quite dry, but I'll just sort of like, go up through the ski there that indentation which is a real pain but i'm going to try and see what i can do with that um i won't be able to put it all the way back i wouldn't have thought um hasn't caught the rails as such but we'll give it a go keep base scraping pop you back in the stand i'm going to jump on the other ski once we've done this one and get that to the point where we're ready to wax but the edges are looking great Look at that nice bit of nail so those are super sharp but again what i will do is i'll dull the tips and the tails to reduce catching with my gummy stone before laying the wax down so let's pop it back in the stand and let's crack on with this
Okay, so we've got these holes all filled with PTEX. And as you can see, we've got quite a lip there. Use this bad boy. Scrape that off. And we've got just a little bit up here. I'm just having a quick look at this burnt area here. Um, and this is some of the material. I I think I can we will be able to pull that back and get that all sorted. Fingers crossed. Um, so yeah, we're going to get this looking shit shape. I'm going to pop you on time lapse. We're going to get this done. Uh, we'll get that done. Full base scrape on this. Uh, these skis are now fresh out the hot room. This is the other set. And we'll get this one waxed. Just here. And uh, this one wax. We'll put that in the hot room. We'll work on the other one. That's video number one. This is video number two. Stay with me. Okay guys, onto this atomic set of gent skis. These are lovely. I'm really intrigued to see how these will come up. The bases were quite dry on this. We had obviously a bit of P-texting to do on both sets of skis. Not a lot, but just enough. There's a couple of nasty gouges which we filled in. I actually did on one of the P-texting on that rail. I actually filled it three times just to make sure I get it as flat as possible. I'm hoping we've got rid of those burn marks. Um, I don't think it was a build up of wax because it actually used some wax remover on the base of the ski and it didn't remove it. Um, but we've given that a really good scrape with the base scraper and got quite a lot of dead material off the base of these skis. Um, so we're going to hook on with a scraper, sharpen this bad boy up and let's get these looking good. Okay guys, so these Atomic Beta Skis are all finished. Um, yeah, I'm really, really happy with these. I think they've come up really, really well. I think we've got a really good dark core, as you can see there from the camera. They've cleaned up lovely. Um, yeah. Da, da, da. We still have that slight grime mark there where they've obviously at some time it's been serviced. Unfortunately, that is on both skis. If I pick this one up as well, Try not to touch the base. Again, a lovely dark finish. There is that indentation. I've got most of it out. Um, you can just see it in the uh, structure of the base. But we've got that P-Tex gouge just there, all done. So that ski is looking, this is the worst ski out of the two. And this ski is looking mighty fine. Bindings are all tightened up. I'll pop a picture of the before of what these skis look like on the screen now. Um, and I think you'll agree, they've come up lovely. I am really well, really well, I'm really pleased with these. And they are razor sharp as well. We've dulled the tip and the ends. We've set the bindings up for the boots. 
you've just got here. So they are all set up um, with the correct settings. And I'll pop a picture of the actual um, setup of the actual bindings as well on the screen. So if the customer ever needs to refer back to this, they can just pull up my video and they can see how their bindings are set up. The DIN settings on these are set to 6.5 due to the customer's criteria, uh, weight, size, dimensions, etc. Which, yeah, I am really, really pleased with these skis. Really pleased. So, but guys, from my pixie set of skis that I did here before, you can kind of see the before and after on that set. And I just put a lot of love and passion into these skis. Um, I like to finesse them. My elbows hurt just through the pressure that I put in. Um, I could do with some more electrical tools possibly, but I think you'll agree from hand craftsmanship, I think they've come up lovely. Well, I'm really pleased with them and I hope the customer is too. But until next time though, guys, don't forget, hit that like, hit that subscribe, go across to my channel. If you can hook me up on Instagram or Facebook, Ride Right Waxing, just simply hashtag me, any ski pictures, anything you like, hook me up and let me see what you've got out there. And if you are obviously you're lucky the recipient of these skis and you've watched this video and you fancy giving me a review once you've ridden them on the snow and you think that it's a good job that I've done then why not leave me a review I'd really really appreciate it and uh, but yeah until next time guys thanks so much ever so much indeed for tuning in uh, it's not as late tonight as it was last night midnight so yeah not burning the candle at both ends but yes until next time I will see you soon